Well, happy leap year, happy leap day, everyone. Yes, 29th of February is a leap year, meaning that we're in a leap year this year. I sometimes ask what happens when someone's born on the 29th. Is their birthday the 28th or is it technically the 1st of March? I've never been able to find someone to ask this question to. I was told once that it depends on the actual time they were born. So 12 o'clock midday, your, your birthday is the 28th. 12 o'clock midnight, well, 12 o'clock uh, p.m. onwards, you're technically the 1st of March. Now, whether that's true or not, I'm afraid I don't know. It does amaze people what kind of lies that can be spread. The fairy tales are spread a lot of the time because they teach people morals. Or at least that's how I've always seen fairy tales. Over time they've been seen as negativity, unfortunately. One fairy tale has been adapted into a Disney story. Do you remember Rumpelstiltskin? I do. But one of the key things about Rumpelstiltskin was his ability to spin straw into gold. And when I say straw, I mean, I mean the kind of straw you find on the farm, not straws that you find, on the, find in drinks. When you, when you, you and I would agree that such a task would be impossible, unbelievable, improbable even. But you'll be amazed how easily it can be to trick. And as we know, our good old friend Robin Hood is very good at tricking Little John. Sorry, not Little John, Prince John. Because Prince John is greedy and Robin Hood taps into that type of greed. So for today's story is a special story. Today's story is a Robin Hood story and it's called Robin Hood spins gold. Prince John was an evil, evil prince. Prince John was a greedy prince. He loved himself. He loved his gold, but he did not love the people in his kingdom. One day, Prince John said to the Sheriff of Nottingham, I have not collected money from the people in three weeks. It is time for a new tax. More gold should make you very happy, sire, said his servant, Sir Hiss. And very rich, said the prince. That very day, the sheriff of not not Nottingham posted a sign. It said, notice, tomorrow morning, all the people of Nottingham must pay a tax of 100 gold pieces. The people were very worried. How could they pay the tax? No one had any gold. Prince John had taken it all. Luckily, the poor people had a friend named Robin Hood. He was an outlaw who lived in the woods. Friar Tuck and Little John lived with him. They were outlaws too. Robin Hood and his men did not like the greedy prince, and the prince did not like them much either. More than once, they had stolen Prince John's gold. They gave it to the poor people. So Prince John and the sheriff were always looking for Robin Hood and his men. When Robin Hood and Little John went to town, they wore disguises. That way, they could find out what was happening without being discovered. They had many different outfits to wear. On the day of the new tax, Robin Hood dressed up as an old blind beggar and Little John dressed up as a woman. They came to Prince John's sign. A group of poor people were reading it. They looked very sad. We will have to get little John's help, said an old woman. You, oh, you will indeed, said Robin. He took off his dark glasses. Look, said the people, it is Robin Hood. I have a plan, Robin 
to help you, said Robin. Just then, the Sheriff of Nottingham came back. Robin put his glasses back on fast. What is going on here? asked the Sheriff. Robin answered. Oh, I was telling these people what I had heard. Robin Hood plans to rob Prince John again. The Sheriff will love to hear about this, said the Sheriff. So the Prince would love to hear about this, said the Sheriff. Come with me. So off they went. The Sheriff and Robin arrived at Prince John's castle. Who is this dirty beggar? cried the Prince. Get him out of here. But sire, said the Sheriff, this man has news of Robin Hood. The Prince's ears perked up. Tell me said the prince. Oh, I heard Robin Hood talking, said, Ro said Robin. He plans to steal your gold tonight. I will double the guards, cried Prince John. No, no, said the sheriff. Triple the guard. Sire, hissed Sir Hiss. It does not matter how many guards you have. Robin Hood will trick you anyway. Quiet, Hiss, yelled Prince John. I know how you can trick Robin Hood, said Beggar Robin. You do? cried the prince. Yes, said Robin. I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. So? asked Prince John. So I will bring my daughter here, said Robin. She will spin all your gold into straw. When Robin Hood gets here, he will find straw, not gold. He will not steal straw. Prince John scratched his head. But how do I get my gold back? That's easy. Easy, said Robin. My daughter will leave her magic spinning wheel here. Then you can spin the straw back into gold yourself. Oh, goody, 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 cried Prince John. At last I will trick Robin Hood. Robin Hood said he would be coming at midnight. Robin Hood said he would Robin Hood said he would be coming at midnight. He added, "So I will leave now to get my daughter. We should be back in plenty of time." Sir Hiss thought the idea was a trick. "Sire," he, he hissed, "this is stop hissing in my ear," roared Prince John. He turned to Robin Hood. Farewell, my good man, he said. Robin Hood quickly left the castle. He went back to the woods where Little John was waiting. Put on your disguise, put on your disguise again, said Robin, and come with me. I will tell you why on the way to the castle. Robin Hood and Little John arrived at the castle. Little John was carrying a spinning wheel. The guard took Robin and Little John to the prince. So, you will spin my gold into straw, Prince John said to Little John. Come with me, hurry. Robin Hood and Little John followed Prince John. The royal counting house was surrounded by guards. Prince John walked past them. So did Robin Hood and Little John. They went inside. The counting room was full of gold. Bags of it were piled high to the ceiling. Spin away, my dear, said Prince John. Little John set up his spinning wheel, but he did nothing else. My daughter is shy, said Robin Hood. 
She cannot spin if you are watching. Very well, said Prince John. Just knock on the door when you are finished. The guards will show you out. Little John and Robin Hood got busy at once. They tied the bags of gold to a rope. They dropped the rope out the window. Friar Tuck was waiting below in a boat. He emptied out the gold. Then he stuffed the bags with straw. Robin pulled the rope back up again. Soon all the gold was gone. The room was full of straw. Friar Tuck's boat was full of gold. He covered the boat he covered the gold with what was left of the straw. When all the gold was covered with straw, he quickly rolled away. Then Robin Hood knocked on the door. The guards opened it. Prince John was waiting outside. He rushed in. Oh, I could not wait, he cried. Prince John looked at the straw. You have really done it, he said. Oh, what a joke on Robin Hood. <laughs> he clicked his heels in the air. Then Prince John said, You can go home now, old man. Just leave your magic spinning wheel here. I would pay you for it, but I have no gold right now. With that, Prince John went to his room. He would wait there for the robber to come. Robin and Little John went back to the woods. Friar Tuck was waiting for them with the gold. Robin Hood and Little John gave bags of gold to the poor people. There was joy in Nottingham all night. Meanwhile, Prince John was walking up and down. Sir Hiss and the Sheriff sat by a window. They were waiting for Robin Hood to come. It was already past midnight. You have been tricked, sire, hissed Hiss. Quiet, Hiss, said Prince John. You always worry too much. But the sun is up, hissed Hiss, and Robin Hood is not here. Come with me, said the prince. I will show you that this is no trick. It does not matter that Robin Hood did not come. Prince John took Sir Hiss and the sheriff to the royal counting house. See, said the prince, they spun the gold into straw just as they said they would. Sire, hissed, yelled Hiss, you have been fooled. But, but, but this is a disaster, cried the Sheriff of Nottingham. No, no, said Prince John, smiling. Watch this. The Prince sat down at the spinning wheel. He started to spin the straw. But no gold came out. I know this would work, said the Prince, after a couple of minutes. It has to work. A whole hour had gone by before the prince realised what had happened. Where is my gold? he cried. But there was no gold, because Robin Hood had tricked him. That was a beautiful story. And it's based on the old Rumpelstiltskin fairy tale, which was something very, very similar. A man desperate to get out of debt, had told the king that his daughter was able, talented enough, to spin straw into gold. And the king was so greedy that he believed it. But of course the girl didn't know how to spin straw into gold. She had no idea. And for her, for her all she knew, it was completely impossible. What was worse, the father was laid off. But if the daughter had failed to spin the straw, in, the straw into gold, well, she was the one on the chopping block. Luckily, Rumpelstiltskin was there to help her, or should I say unluckily, as the story would go. Rumpelstiltskin offered to help in exchange for any gifts that she had. All she had to offer on the first visit was a very old amulet that she had. 
Rumpelstiltskin was happy to have that. On the second visit, after she was put into a bigger room full of straw, Rumpelstiltskin allowed himself to do it again, on the condition that she handed over a very brass hairpin. But by the third visit, with the king being even more greedy, and only allowed one hour, by the way, to do all of these tasks, the poor girl was out of, out of amulets, out of trinkets, and out of ideas. That's when Rumpelstiltskin revealed his bad side. Rumpelstiltskin said that he would spin the straw into gold on the condition that she would hand over their, her first-born child. Didn't matter if it was a girl or a boy, it was the first-born. Desperate, she'd said yes. And after seeing the gold, the gold in the room, the king offered his hand in marriage. Very soon, they produced a daughter. But poor, the poor little girl hadn't forgotten about her promise to Rumpelstiltskin. She knew he would come back for his side of the bargain, but she didn't want to part with her beautiful little child. Rumpelstiltskin arrived, expecting the child to be handed over. The girl begged and pleaded, asking for one more chance. And upon seeing the little girl's eyes shine and her hair so beautiful, Rumpelstiltskin offered a chance. Three days before he would take the child, and each night she would have to try and guess his name. Well, with so many different names around the world, it would be almost impossible to guess one person's name, particularly admittedly something as awkward as Rumpelstiltskin. And for the first two nights she failed. The first night she went through every single common name that she could think of. And the second night she tried to send guards and servants and all kinds of people to come up with every single male and sometimes even female names in the hope of being able to find out his name. But by the second night, no luck. Then, just as she was about to give up hope and was packing a bag for her little baby, a guard came in quite timid and unsure on his little fact. He said he'd been out in the woods scouting for names and had come back from a, from a village far off with already a huge list when he'd stumbled upon a man in the forest. The man in the forest, the guard was hiding behind a bush, was dancing around the fire almost gleefully. He claimed that one day he would have his prize and he would finally be able to take the little child that he'd already want, always wanted. He was giving off strange chants and laughter and among the chants, the guard remembered a name, Rumpelstiltskin. Now, the girl was almost convinced that the young man dancing around the forest, quite conveniently, she thought, he, she thought to herself, must be the same man who was after her little girl. After all, after all, the man had claimed that he was waiting for a little child. So when he arrived, so when the man arrived to claim his prize, she first pretended she didn't know the name coming up with two almost impossible names. He was dancing with glee at this point, thinking he'd finally been able to outsmart someone. But then at that very moment, she asked him if his name was Rumpelstiltskin. In a fit of rage that would have made a lion happy, he got so angry that he couldn't control his own temper. He stomped around the room so much that he ended up splitting himself in two. Or at least that's how some of the stories go. In other stories, he just jumped out the window in a fit of rage and ran off and was never seen again. That's the thing about fairy tales. Sometimes the way they're told can be quite different. I prefer the jumping out the window one and running off. That's a lot better. I'll stick with that one. He got so angry that he jumped out the window and was, and was gone before anyone could stop him. He vanished from everyone's sight and no one has seen him since. The young girl, the young baby and the king lived out his days and ruled the kingdom with kindness and joy. And that's said to be how the story ends. Both has an idea of trickery and both is outsmarting someone who is so greedy they can't see the truth. I don't know for sure whether it's possible to spin gold, 
spin straw into gold or even the other way around. I certainly believe that it's vainly impossible. A spinning wheel is used to make wool. I suppose in a way you could make gold out of the wool that would have been spun from the straw, if straw can be made into what? If straw can be made. I think in all honesty you should just stick with of, um, spinning wool. That would be a lot better. And talking of spinning things around, I better get some sleep. I got a busy day tomorrow. I'll see you again real soon, and I hope you enjoyed tonight's story. I'll see you around, my friends. Bye for now.